Whenever you have occasion to send a card, remember a Hallmark card will best express your perfect taste, your thoughtfulness. The Hallmark Charlotte Greenwood Show. And here she is, that lovable lady of stage, screen, and radio, Charlotte Greenwood. Today we tell a story about three young folks who have rather strange ideas when the first day of school rolls around. Well, gee whiz, the fun is all over when September sneaks up on you and the school bells start ringing. You mean you don't find them exciting, Mickey? Exciting? Do you know anything worse than hearing school bells all your life, Mrs. Greenwood? Uh Uh-huh. Not hearing wedding bells ever in my life. (laughs) And it isn't Mrs. Greenwood, it's Miss Greenwood. (laughs) Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, you're sorry. <laughs> yes, ladies and gentlemen, Charlotte Greenwood is brought to you this Sunday and every Sunday at this time by the makers of Hallmark Greeting Cards to remind you that whenever you want to remember someone, you'll find a Hallmark card that says just what you want to say the way you want to say it. So when you choose a card, look on the back for the three identifying words a Hallmark card. Yes, don't forget, a Hallmark card will best express your perfect taste, your thoughtfulness. And now to the little town of Lakeview, where Aunt Charlotte is raising the three Barton youngsters, little Robert and teenage Jack and Barbara. Today is the first day of school. Charlotte is putting breakfast on the table when Robert scuffles into the dining room. His steps noticeably lagging. Charlotte says, Better get a move on, Robert. That school bell is due to ring in half an hour. Aw. Well, you don't seem anxious to meet your new teacher. Well, gee whiz, Aunt Charlotte. You forget that you were young once? Forget? No, but I can't remember when. (laughs) Now, you wouldn't want to be late for your first day, would you? Aunt Charlotte... I don't feel so very good this morning. <laughs> Do you mind sitting over there, darling? I have to plug the waffle line in on this side of the table. Yeah, it's sort of my stomach, Aunt Charlotte. Seems like bees were buzzing around inside. Robert, bees were buzzing around. You haven't got bees in your stomach. You've got a bee in your bonnet. <laughs> now, what do you have? Bacon and eggs or waffles? Oh, I don't feel like I could eat waffles. Waffles aren't bad for your stomach, are they? No. Waffles? With real butter and maple syrup? Well, I... Maybe I can eat part of one. Oh, it seems too bad. You can't eat an egg. I fix the yolk the way you like them, you know. Baste it with brown butter. And... Yes. Yeah. Uh, maybe I could manage to stuff a couple down. Seeing as you went to so much trouble, it only might make me work. <laughs> That's good. One piece of bacon enough? I couldn't eat three. Huh? Not the way I feel. Well, here's two. There's toast and strawberry jam and... Now, where are Jack and Barbara? Hmm, Barbara's trying to argue Jack out of the bathroom. Just like all last winter. I don't know why Barbara's in such a hurry to wash for. She doesn't have to go to school this morning. She's got another whole week before college starts. Hmm, that reminds me. Here you are. A nice crisp waffle. Boy, it's rather crackly, isn't it? Uh, maybe... I already have the next one on. <laughs> Here's the syrup. Hmm. You know, that is funny. The syrup? No, the fact that Barbara hasn't even mentioned about getting any clothes for college. That isn't like a girl. It sure isn't. Every time a girl turns around, she's got to have the right dress. Every time a boy turns around, she knows she's got it. (laughs) (laughs) Here, well, here's Jack. Oh, Aunt Charlotte, is that laundry trying to make out a freak out of me? Look at me. Well, good heavens, Jack. You look as if you, as if you just ran through a closet of old clothes shouting, If you want to go, climb on. <laughs> What's that rig for? Well, for school, and that's why. Well, what kind of a get-up is that? Pat Levi's rolled halfway up your legs and that awful check shirt hanging out? Well, the shirt, that's what's wrong. 
When I bought it, it hung exactly to my knees. Now look at it. Shrunk. Four inches. <laughs> it still looks like my grandfather's nightshirt. <laughs> Jumping Josephine, what do you want me to wear to school? Well, you bought that herringbone tweed for that purpose. Oh, Aunt Charlotte, herringbones for Sunday. Well, what about the sport jackets and slacks we got? Oh, jackets and slacks, they're for Saturdays. Well, it looks to me as though girls dress for the occasion and boys occasionally dress. <laughs> Ah, uh, Jack's not a boy. He's a senior. Quiet, Sprout. Well, Jack, at least your shoes are polished. Oh, jeepers, I never thought of that. Where's the sandpaper? What do you want with sandpaper? Well, to scratch up there's no shoes with. What? You want I should go to school looking neat? Well, I wouldn't want to. <laughs> I wouldn't want you to do anything rash. Rash? <laughs> See, a fella just can't be different, can he, all by himself. Jack, you mean all the boys in your class are going to look like you do today? Well, they better. I don't make this out very clearly. You make swell waffles, though, Aunt Charlotte. Could I, um... Yeah, Rob. Right. <laughs> I guess those bees in your stomach are hungry, too. <laughs> Here's another one. You see, Aunt Charlotte, GIs aren't supposed to give away any of their equipment. Mm -hmm. But just to say, every girl in high school, of course, except the squares... Squares? Yeah, squares. Well, they got hold of some army shoes and fatigue clothes, and they're going to wear them to school this year. So what are our fellas going to do with all our girls looking like GIs on KP? Did you inquire what the wax have to offer? No, we've got to show them that we can still be sloppier than any goofy girls. Uh-huh. Proving the superiority of the male, I suppose. That's right, yeah. yeah. But, boy, I'll sure have to step on it. My girl's got to knock all the fellas for a loop. How? But she had some paratroopers boots size 12. Oh, she's half she is. <laughs> <laughs> now I see my girlhood mistakes. <laughs> they catch on? Yes, I was thoughtless enough to wear shoes the right size. <laughs> Morning, Barbara. Good morning, Aunt Charlotte. Yeah, you're just in time for a hot waffle. Can I split it with the rat, Charlotte? May I split it with her? Yes, darling, you may. Gosh, thanks, thanks. Well, at least I can say the condemned ate a hearty meal. <laughs> What's the sense, Barbara? Don't you speak to me? <laughs> you. One solid half hour in the bathroom. Well, I was shaving. Well, you missed the whisker and cut your teeth. <laughs> <laughs> and what's happened to all your hair? That is hair I'm looking at. I thought he was balancing a worn-out clothes brush on his head. Oh, it's a crew cut. You say crew cut or crude cut? <laughs> <laughs> See, that's your style this year, Aunt Charlotte. Mm. Well, how do you like that? He has naturally curly hair and he whacks it all off. Oh, who wants curly hair? We, we do. do. Oh. Hey, these waffles are even better if you put strawberry jam on top of the syrup. You ought to try it, Aunt Charlotte. Oh, thanks. I want to get into my clothes this season. <laughs> Which reminds me, Barbara, shouldn't we start shopping this morning for your college wardrobe? Oh, well, I, I don't see how I can today. Well, on Wednesday, you have to go over to Mound City and register, you know, for your courses. Classes start next Monday, don't they? Well, yes, but I, I can't very well get away from the library. Besides, I'll be living at home all the time I go to college, and I, I can get my clothes as I go along. Well, just the same. We'd better pick up a few things this morning. Well, all right. But I've got a date at 12. Yeah, with that ex-soldier, Mickey Taylor, I bet. Mickey Taylor. Do I know him? Oh, not yet, but I want you to, Aunt Thomas. Hmm. I met him at the country club dance last week. I'd like to have him over for dinner some night. Anytime you like, but give me some notice. Those boys have appetites. Oh, that's <laughs> And I know you like him. Oh, he's simply a man. Oh, he's a big fella, huh? Oh, oh he's not big a man. He, he's terrific a man. <laughs> So mature and grown up. How old is he? Almost 20. Yeah. <laughs> really old, isn't he? <laughs> well, so Mick is always talking about where the country's heading and, and what we're going to do about reconversion and what kind of a wife he wants. Oh, and naturally, you find him most interesting when he's talking about the future of American industry. Oh, yeah. But really, he has the most sensationally definite ideas about things. Uh-huh. Well, what about his wife? Has he sensationally definite ideas about what she should be, too? Oh, yes. She must be between 5 feet 2 and 5 feet 4. You're 5 3. According, <laughs> according to figures, I should have two men. <laughs> Go on. Go on. <laughs> She must be able to cook. Your next book is a cookbook. <laughs> and and she must have a sense of humor. Well, that's for family bridge games. <laughs> and she must be able to make her own living. Say, who's going to be the man in that family anyway? Oh, oh well, that's in case anything happens to him after they're married and have uh, uh, five children and not much insurance. Uh -huh. Well, if he thought up five children, why didn't he think up more insurance? <laughs> <laughs> oh, those G.I. 
guys. They're always getting girls beamed up. Why did I have to be only 17 when the war ended? Oh, there's the school bell, Robert. Have you finished your light morning snack yet? I guess so. But it doesn't seem to set very well. The bees are buzzing again. Yep. Every time I mention school, the bees buzz. <laughs> oh, by the way, I have a going to school present for you, a cat. Okay, thanks. Say, that's an air call overseas cap, Aunt Charlotte. An air call cap? A real one? Oh, try it on. It's a real one. Oh, boy. Can I wear it? That's what it's for. Gosh, see, I've got to hurry. Oh, off you go. <laughs> and here's your lunch money, dear, in case the bees buzz again. Oh, wait a minute. Let's get the load of this cap. And it almost fits. See, I have to beat it, too. I'm going to back where there's a swell mud hole out there I can wreck my shoes in. So long, so long. <laughs> How can you manage to keep up with those two boys? Oh, Barbara, trying to keep pace with two growing boys is like trying to walk on both sides of the street at the same time. You always end up in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> now we go shopping, huh? Will you do the dishes while I go upstairs and get my hat, my purse, and my courage? <laughs> The only ones getting ready for school, Barbara. May I help you, madam? <laughs> you already helped me calling me madam. <laughs> <laughs> We're looking for uh, college dresses, size 12, for the very young lady. You're flattering one of us, and I like it. <laughs> Do I look like size 12? Mm -hmm. Yes, for the very young lady, please. And if you please be seated, I'll see what I can find for you. Perhaps that you'd be interested in something in a coat for yourself? I might be interested in something in a frock coat. <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, show us the college dresses today. Yes, I'll be right with you. I brought the pamphlet that the college sent outlining your wardrobe for school, Barbara. Did you? Oh, isn't this fun, huh? You know, Barbara, I never had a chance to go to college myself, and I've always felt I missed a lot. Not only the educational part, but the excitement of getting ready for college, getting new clothes, and looking forward to making new friends, and entering a new and wider world. Well, maybe college was all that when you were a girl, Aunt Charlotte. But going to college now seems so like prolonging your childhood another four years. Well, Barbara, I had no idea you felt that way. Aunt Charlotte, I don't want to go to college. I want to stay a grown-up making my own living. Besides, all the young fellows I should really be going to college with are just getting out of uniform and going to work. Mm, I see. Well, Barbara, that's a decision you make for yourself, of course, and I only hope you'll never be sorry. You like your job now, but without training, you may not progress much beyond it. Oh, but I don't expect to work all my life. You see, I have plans. Marriage and a home. Mm. Had plans like that myself once, but he got away. <laughs> well, I suppose you want to forget all about these clothes and go meet Mickey. You do understand, don't you? Fellows like Mickey, they spoil me for college life and young college kids. I want to live in the real world, not a campus world. And go with grown-up men, not college twerps. Twerk? Mm-hmm. Well, you'd better run along and I'll tell the sales lady we've decided to buy mops and dishpans instead of college casuals. Mm -hmm. Who am I to tell you how to get your man? <laughs> Every day, our veterans' hospitals are receiving more servicemen from overseas. To these sick and wounded boys, our thoughtfulness can mean so much. And that's why we want to do all we can to bring a little happiness into their lives by visiting them whenever possible, and by sending notes and cards often. For gay, thoughtful cheer cards encourage our boys and keep them smiling, and help to assure them they're not forgotten. Ask your Hallmark dealer to show you his wide selection of fine Hallmark cheer cards. However you'd like to express your thoughts with a warm, comforting, get-well message or a lively, humorous verse, you'll find a Hallmark card that says just what you want to say the way you want to say it. You'll find dozens of original cards, too, for remembering our boys on their special days. 
on their birthdays and anniversaries, think what a list you can bring them with a card. And that goes for your friends and dear ones as well. There's such a variety of tasteful, distinctive Hallmark cards appropriate for every occasion. Choose them this week. Hallmark cards are on display at America's finest stores. Remember, a Hallmark card will best express your perfect taste, your thoughtfulness. Now back to the Hallmark Charlotte Greenwood show. A week has passed since Barbara informed Aunt Charlotte that she didn't want to go to college. But both in the living room is the phone ring. Barbara rushes to answer. Well, I'll give it to Aunt Charlotte. Hello? Yes, this is Father Barton. Hmm? Um, hello, Peter. Oh, no, thanks. I don't feel like going to a movie. Here, call me again sometime. Bye. That's the sixth floor you've brushed off tonight, Barbara. Are you trying to lose friends and alienate people? <laughs> Peter and those kids. They bore me. Oh, yes. We old ladies do have a rough time, don't we? Mm-hmm. All our youth locked up in an attic trunk. Well, I certainly have my mind on something besides football and chocolate sodas and cars. Meaning Mickey Taylor? Oh, he's not even in town. He's on a fishing trip. But he's had this vacation coming to him. Just out of the service like he is and about to settle down on a job. Has he any particular kind of a job in mind? Well, he's never mentioned anything special. He just said he was settling down to real work as soon as he got some of the physics out of his system. Well, Robert, how's your studying going? Oh, I hope that's right. How drunk is going up to be anyway? Well, I don't like to say because some of my best friends are grown up. <laughs> what's wrong? The guys who wrote this arithmetic book. That's what's wrong. Did the old meanie stick in a lot of hard problems? No, the problems are easy enough. But they don't have the right answers in the back of the book. Not one right. <laughs> <laughs> Barbara? Since you are now a grown-up, and since I have never been able to tell a fraction from a decimal point, would you mind helping Robert and the authors of that arithmetic book see eye to eye on those problems? Oh, sure. I'll uh, bring your books and papers over here, Robert. Okay, but I'm warning you, they're gonna be awful disgusted with the answers they give. This one's on me, Barbara. Hello? Yes? Yes. Just a moment. For you, Barbara. Thank you. Hello? Oh, Mickey. Oh, why, of course, Mickey. Oh, that's wonderful, Mickey. Oh, yes, come over right away, Mickey. Oh, swell, Mickey. Goodbye, Mickey. Oh, that was Mickey. <laughs> I never would have guessed it. <laughs> He's coming right over and... Oh, my God, he sounded so windy and sunburned over the phone. <laughs> over the phone? Huh? Well, that's the neatest trick of the week. <laughs> I have to hurry and brush my hair and change my dress and fix up. He likes girls with dust and gleaming hair. Hey, what about my arithmetic, Barbara? I'll touch the back of the program. I can try, but I have a feeling this is going to be an awful blow to American education. <laughs> I'm just in the living room, Jack. I'm not in the next county. Oh, well, here you are. Hey, Rodden, where you want to get your shoes off for? I'm doing my arithmetic. I'm counting. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, Aunt Charlotte, where's the shoe polish and how do you press pants? The shoe polish is in the kitchen cupboard. And what about pressing pants? Oh, I want a nice edge on my tan slacks and I think I'll wear my brown plaid sports coat and a burgundy tie and handkerchief. Sort of a study in browns and deep reds. Have you a new girl, or is the circus in town? No, no, no. It's for school tomorrow. School? You're dressing like that for school? Why, well, I thought it was worth your life to be caught looking neat in school. Nope. All changed. All changed. Yep. Okay. You know, the girls were practically pledged to be sloppier than the boys this year. But when we fellas out did them at their own game, they pulled a switcheroo. Now they've decided to go feminine. Think of that. Feminine. Beginning tomorrow with ruffles, skirts, and high heels to work. But we're going to go to one better. Are the boys going to wear them, too? <laughs> no, no. We're just going to be smooth. Smooth as silk. We've got to out-meet the girls the same as we out floppy them. Well, I don't know why I take the male side of this battle of the sexes, but leave your slacks in the kitchen and I'll knife edge them later. Oh, thanks, Aunt Charlotte. I'll be shining up the shoes. Robert, I am certainly glad that your biggest problems are still mathematical. All right, now. 
Let's have a look at this book now. Hmm. If I had five apples and you had four apples, how would I divide them so that four people had the same amount of apples? I know the answer to that. So do I, smarty pants. Make applesauce and split it far away. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that must be Barbara's immense young man at the door. Charlotte, would you mind telling me I'm not quite ready? I'm practically there, Barbara. Hello. Yes. Well, you must be Mickey. And you must be Miss Greenwood. Come right in, Mickey. Well, I sure wanted to meet you, Miss Greenwood. Barbara told me so much about you. Well, she's been fairly detailed about you, too, Mickey, so I guess we can start out being old friends, can't we? That suits me. Uh-huh. This is Barbara's brother, Robert. Hiya, Robert. Hi, Mickey. You want to good at arithmetic? Oh, I used to be. Careful, Mickey, you're walking into a trap. <laughs> Robert, please tell Barbara Mickey's here. Okay, Aunt Charlotte. Did you specialize in anything in the Army, Mickey? Radar. I was tech for Miss Greenwood, but I only got a chance to scratch the surface. I like it, though. Uh, it takes years of study, I suppose, to be tops at it. Well, you can say that again, but it's sure interesting. Oh, I learned enough so that I can probably get a job fixing radios anyway. Well, why stop at that if the government will help you master radar? Oh, I don't know. Maybe I'm too restless for all those years of study. Oh, that's too bad. It's really too bad to be too restless to swap a few years of study for a lifetime of success. Say, that's coming in on the beam. You, you know, I was sort of thinking about that myself, out there fishing this thing, wasn't it? Well, now, after what you've just said, I've got a hunch. I'll start packing tonight. Packing? But you just got back from a trip. Hi, Barbara. Yeah, a fishing trip. And it was really swell, too. I had time to think. Sitting in a boat out there in the middle of the lake... Knowing there wasn't a top sergeant within a hundred miles to give me an order. <laughs> For the first time, I felt like a civilian. But this is packing, Mickey. Are you, are you going someplace else? Well, I wasn't, but I am. Something your Aunt Charlotte said woke me up. What do you mean? I'm going to college, Barbara, so I can study radar, electronics. Oh, but, but you're too old for college. I mean... You're mature. Mickey, I think what surprises Barbara is that a person who's seen as much as you and grown up as fast would want to go back to the confinement of school, any kind of school. Yeah, it kind of surprises me, too. Maybe I won't like it at first, but like you said, I've got places to go in life. But why? Why do you need school, Mickey? I should think you'd had enough schooling in the Army. I should think you'd want to be on your own. Get a job and settle down. That's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going on with the train the Army started me in, radar. I'm going to be an expert in electronics. Not, not just a guy who knows vaguely that sound waves bounce back when they hit something. I'm going to see that I really have a job when I settle down. One that's leading someplace. Oh, good for you, Missy. Now I know we've really won this war. Not just the battles, but the future. <laughs> another job. The library isn't the only place to work. No, I can't get another job. I tried. All afternoon I tried. Except when I was seeing Mickey off. And it was always the same story. Not enough training. I just don't know anything. I can't even try to answer. I can't do anything. There now, dear. After dinner, we'll talk this all out. But what am I going to do? What can I do? Well, you can still go to college. If people like Mickey go to school, there must be something in it. It's too late. Registration was last week and classes began today. They only take a certain number for the course I wanted to know. Well, I, um, I just happened to be over at Mound City last Wednesday and, uh, as I passed the registrar's office, uh, well, you're in, Barbara, if you want to be. I, I am? Oh, Aunt Charlotte, you silly. You wonderful super duper Jilly, you. <laughs> oh. oh, no. No, it's no use. What's no use? Clothes. I haven't a thing to wear, and you remember how definite they were in that pamphlet about what you need for every occasion. I'd be so socially. Not entirely. 
You see, that day you left me at Daly's department store, I found that saleswoman extremely persuasive. You see those boxes over there in the corner? Yes. Well, open them up and use a knife. I'm much too excited to wait for you to fumble with a lot of strings. Oh, I wonder what it's going to be. And Darla, a green basic dress, my favorite color. And casual dresses. Look, three, five of them. Sweaters and skirts. And this adorable babble jacket. Oh, well, I probably overdid it getting all that stuff, but I just decided that no one was going to cheat me out of the fun of buying clothes for a girl going to college. Oh, oh this is beautiful. And so serviceable. If I'd gone out to get a wardrobe, I'd probably have wound up with a lot of silly things. Oh, I guess I do some pretty silly things myself. About clothes? What do you ever do to silly? Remodel my trousseau every year. <laughs> Next time you buy a card for any occasion, look on the back for the identifying words, a Hallmark card. H-A-L-L-M-A-R-K. A Hallmark card. Like sterling on silver, those three words are your assurance of finest quality. You see, it is quality that has maintained Hallmark leadership for more than 30 years. Because Hallmark quality tells your friends you cared enough to send the very best. Just go to your dealer and say, I'd like to see the Hallmark card, please. Or always remember that a Hallmark card will best express your perfect taste, your thoughtfulness. And I'll Charlotte Greenwood. Friends, the other day someone I know said, aren't prices high? It seems we're paying more and more for everything we buy. The cost of living still is up in spite of OPA. I wonder if there's anything that's low in price today. I told her yes. At least one thing is priced extremely low. In fact, of all the bargains, it's the greatest one I know. It will cost you only pennies, but the pleasure that it brings is a thousand times more lasting than more expensive things. It buys a smile to light the face of someone far away. It buys some sunshine for a friend who's had a dreary day. It buys the sort of wealth to which no wit riches can compare. Kindliness and thoughtfulness and proof that you still care. What is this bargain? Where is it sold? <laughs> well, finding it's not hard. It's just a chance that takes to send a friendly Hallmark card. Los Angeles. Friends, Christ.